chaos, confusion and anger growing in the wake of President Trump's immigration ban. Demonstrations against Donald Trump's immigration ban continue nationwide. Late last year in Paris, employees working at a 24-hour news channel went on strike. They downed tools for 31 days. The strike at Itele was part of a bigger conflict that pits journalists against one of the richest and most powerful businessmen in France, Vincent Bolloré. Bolloré's media and entertainment conglomerate, Vivendi, bought Itele's parent company, Canal Plus, about three years ago. Since then, he's replaced most of the management team, made some controversial hires, scrapped some popular programs, and left himself open to accusations of killing quality journalism, including the kind that exposes some of his own business affairs, particularly in Africa, where Bolloré makes most of his money. The Listening Post's Marcella Pizarro now from Paris on the tension that exists between the business and journalism sides of Vincent Bolloré's French media empire. French journalists will have covered their fair share of strikes, but two months ago it was the journalists themselves who stopped working and started protesting in one of the longest journalist strikes in French history. Workers at the 24-hour news channel Itélé took to the picket line in a showdown triggered after the channel hired talk show host Jean-Marc Morandini to present a primetime show despite having been accused of multiple counts of sexual wrongdoing. The man who gave him the job was France's billionaire business tycoon Vincent Bolloré. He made his fortune from paper, not for news, but the thin variety used to make cigarettes and to publish the Bible before going into construction and advertising. In 2013, he took control of the Vivendi Group and its affiliates, including the Canal Plus network, of which Itélé is a component. And journalists there say he wants to turn the news channel into an infotainment one that promotes the Vivendi Group's other activities. Ever since Vincent Bolloré took control of the Vivendi Group, which also owns Canal Plus and Itélé, he totally transformed the business model of the media network. The strike was a response to the fact that Bolloré has no clue what to do with Itele. For the last 18 months, the journalists working there have been uncertain about what the future holds. He made enormous cuts to the budgets and fired a lot of employees. Then he brought in his own men and put them at the head of various departments at Canal Plus and imposed them on newsrooms. Journalists at ETLA asked him to, at the very least, sign a code of ethics which would guarantee journalistic independence. But he refused. Vincent Bolloré, qui n'est de pas céder. Vincent Bolloré, c'est quelqu'un qui a un, un formidable entrepreneur. Vincent Bolloré is a great entrepreneur. He's been very successful in all his businesses, but he has a big problem with journalism. He doesn't understand that journalists aren't motivated by making money for the group they belong to. He had already been the owner of smaller media outlets like Direct Matin, which he used to promote his own products or censor other products he didn't like. Since then, the Canal Plus network has been transformed. Bolloré took Les Guignols de l'Info, a well-known political puppet show, sidelined the writers and boasted that he'd be the one writing the scripts. He cancelled Le Zapping, a long-running media critique show because, he said, there was no point giving other channels free publicity. This year, it was announced Le Petit Journal, the irreverent satirical news show, would only be available to subscribers. It was the death knell, so they moved to another channel. Au revoir, Canal Plus. Then, Bolloré turned his attention to news and current affairs. Jean-Baptiste Rivoire was the deputy editor of Special Investigation on Canal Plus. Last year, Bolloré cancelled the show after one of its reports exposed tax fraud at French bank Crédit Mutuel, one of the Bolloré Group's main financial partners. The expose was later broadcast on the public channel France 3 instead. Nos révélations impliquent pour la première fois une grande banque française. 
La question qu'il faut se poser, c'est est-ce que c'est la... You have to question whether the choices and decisions made by Bolloré came from sound financial reasoning or whether actually they were motivated by something much more personal. I think he bought Canal Plus to wield political influence in France by protecting his friends from reports on the news channel. And also, I don't think you can underestimate the African angle. Sous-estimer la question de l'Afrique. Because the mainstay of Vincent Bolloré's business is spread across more than 40 African countries where Bolloré Africa Logistics controls ports, transport and plantations. In the past few years, he's developed Canal Plus Afrique, a channel which has become a major force around the African continent, much more prominent than Canal Plus is in France, where Bolloré has been able to yield his influence and control his company's image. And when journalists show his business in a less than favorable light, Bolloré gets litigious. He's currently suing France 2 TV for 50 million euros over an investigative documentary program he says is defamatory. And that's just one of many lawsuits he's filed against journalists in the past few years. We went to Douala in North Cameroon to report on Bolloré's palm oil plantations. He hates it when we do that. We saw plantation workers working with very little protection or none at all. Several weeks after the documentary was aired, Bolloré denied those people worked for him and said that France 2 TV had paid adults to pose as children. He accused us of lying, as if a journalist could pay an actor to play a child and to put on fake gloves with holes in them to show that the equipment was in bad condition. He took us to court, but the accusations were crazy. Port and railway activities have been at the heart of the Bolloré group for the last 20 years. He has crafted himself a true empire in Africa. Bolloré does not like news because it has the potential to hinder the work his company does. Legal action is being taken against him in Africa. Legal action is also taken every time he comes into contact with a journalist regarding his business in Africa. In purchasing the Canal Plus Group, Bolloré saw the opportunity to gain political and social power through Canal Plus Afrique a channel that has been innovative over the last few years and has become very popular in Africa. Through the channel, he can promote his company and partners. He can give good publicity to African politicians whom he would like to see in power. This is the main reason why he purchased the Canal Plus Group. Business tycoons like to have their fingers in many pies, and investing in the media provides them with something that other holdings do not, a certain degree of influence. The flip side of that is being held to account, sometimes by journalists that work in their own organizations. We made a series of attempts to talk to management at Canal Plus and Itele. They said they were unavailable for interview. Many parliamentarians say they're alarmed at the degree of corporate concentration in the French media sector in general, that this is part of a wider trend that must be stopped. And they're trying to push a new law through Parliament, a piece of legislation that some call the anti bolloré law, but that others say is about media independence as a whole. Bolloré is a symptom of a bigger problem. In the US, Jeff Bezos bought Amazon. And in France, Berger, Niel and Pegas bought Le Monde. Patrick Drahi took over L'Express, BFM and RMC. And now Bolloré has joined them. All these millionaires from outside the media are buying them up. And they're slowly gaining control over the world's biggest media groups. This phenomenon is a real threat to independent journalism.